Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and you are about to check out a brand new episode of the Sand Podcast, in which we talk about CrossFit HQ dropping the bomb on some doping results, the Sand Podcast t-shirts, that's right, they look great, and all we want to see from the Rogue Legends Invitational. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys next time. Welcome to this episode of Siblings Against Ninjas. Hmm, I think that's fairly accurate, though. We're short one sibling this week. Uh, we are both, me and Kyle, against ninjas. Put our foot down, it's a line in the sand you that's don't a, cross. That's a strong... Mm-hmm. And to be clear, we're talking about Asian... Go on. Ninjas. Yes. Like from Crouching Tigers. I don't Hidden think dragons. those are ninjas. <clears throat> anything, those anything. were more kung fu. Exactly. I just don't. want to make sure that we're clear that we don't mean it as like a black slur. If there were... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that as a black slur. Does that exist as a black You've slur? You've never heard, like, my ninja? No. It's not a slur, but ninja it's like another oh, word. Oh, okay, right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Well, n- that's definitely not what it means, I we're hope. We're not against that ninjas. one. Uh, that one definitely... Yeah, we're against ninjas, not ninjas. Does that, does that make sense? It's clear now. It's clear now, right? That one comes from uh, Nando Commando on Instagram. One of those O's is a zero. You guys have to figure out which one. Uh, Nando what is Commando. Nando. What is what is the Nando in Commando? I have no idea. It's Nandrolone? Just, it just says Nan, Nando Commando. I just like the name. It's a good name. Okay. It's a good right. name. And they sent in like four or five of them. I think we've used one or two of them before, but I'm just going back to the well. The well isn't dry, guys. Mm-hmm. The well is not dry. You know whose well is also not dry? Sean Ramirez as well is not dry. <laughs> uh, we got two it's new. Filled. <laughs> it's filled with Endurable. Apparently, it's filled with Endurable or something else. Maybe I was wrong with with its Endurable, I but I'm pretty it sure endurable. it's Endurable. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it was, I'm pretty sure it's the same stuff that that was GW five hundred one five hundred six. That's the one. Uh-huh, there you go. And uh, yeah, so I, let's let's go ahead and just rewind like thirty seconds mm. so we can actually you know give some context to this shit. CrossFit HQ released five new names of uh, drug-tested athletes, uh, three of which were from regionals. So we got three new positive results from regionals, although my assumption is that it just was a long appeals process. And then we got two CrossFit Games Masters athletes who tested positive, which, you know, Masters athletes... I don't know. I feel like that's a field of competition where probably there's like a lot more like testosterone and HGH use. I think they should. Although this is not testosterone and HGH, that was the this is definitely not yeah, yeah. testosterone and HGH. But I was I'm, where where was the te- or what was the uh, uh, when was the testing done? Was it at the games? Yeah, I think it was. Okay. It was at the games. Four, it was on at site. the games. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you know, so we had we had two athletes, two masters athletes test positive. One is named Kelly Holm. She mm-hmm. took fourth in the women's thirty-five to thirty-nine. Damn. She tested <clears throat> positive for uh, Endurable, which she was actually able to negotiate her sanctioned period down from four years to two years by proving that. Uh, you know, it was from a tainted supplement. So the tainted supplement thing worked. Oh, yeah. It finally mm-hmm. worked, guys. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he, here's the thing. One, she totally could be telling the truth. Totally. Uh, but also, if you are going to be taking Endurable, it behooves you to find a supplement ahead of time, which has a reputation for having tainted Endurable in it, and buy some of that so that you have a receipt. My mm-hmm. understanding, by the way, is that Endurable isn't that effective anyway. It's really effective. What? Ricky Gerard would yeah, say otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what it does <laughs> is it basically takes you, if you don't do any aerobic training whatsoever, it takes you within a few days and keeps you at like your maximum aerobic capacity, as in you've been training, you know, rowing intervals for months and months and months to build up your aerobic capacity. It gives you that sort of instantaneously and keeps you there. Wow. Without doing any training, I didn't know any of this. Oh yeah, that, it makes that, sense that, 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 that it's that's called it, endurable. It's like, that's the thing. What what it means is you can focus on like just you know what Ricky Garrard, for example, could well have been doing is just focusing on strength training and nothing but strength training. Fuck conditioning. Just take some endurable and now he can run forever. Wow. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Oh yeah. 
Well, the, so she was able to re- negotiate her sanction period down, which is, by the way, the first time. I'm pretty sure the first time that's happened in CrossFit. Yeah, I think so. Because normally it's like, fuck you. Yeah, I don't care. Exactly. Normally it's a big middle finger. And this year, this time they were like, uh, all right, how about two years? Uh, the other person that got popped, I mentioned earlier, Sean Ramirez, he got popped for the same stuff that she did in Durable yet again, but also Austrin. Which is another thing. It, so of the of the fifteen positive tests that we've seen uh, in the 2017, 2018 CrossFit game season, one third of those people were taking Endurable. So mm-hmm. all I'm saying <laughs> obviously is obviously it's useful for CrossFit. Athletes. All I'm saying is Ricky Garrard was a hell of a salesman. Maybe he didn't mean to be, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, maybe maybe he should uh, maybe he should get a cut of all the endurable sales I, in the world. He might be. Who knows? He's actually secretly a Glasgow Smith Klein <laughs> employee <laughs> who's all just a ploy to sell more endurable. Uh, unfortunately, no, no, that's never because of you know, uh, no, no one's pursuing it to be a legal drug at this point here. Uh, just because of you know rat tests showing higher high levels of cancer, there is that like, small little thing oh, yeah, exactly. about how well, it definitely causes cancer in rats. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like they dropped it. And I've heard arguments for and against how how meaningful that is, but it's like they it's been dropped from development and approval as a drug. So it's basically available as a research chemical, one of those unscheduled research chemicals. So you buy it along with your fertilizer on like growthfertilizer.com no. oh, hell, you, know, you don't need to go that deep you just go to you know just a basic research chemical site and they sell all the SARMs and all the various peptides and endurable all the things which are uh, yeah not approved for human consumption but which are not yet scheduled drugs and they can't physically stop me from taking it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so uh, so Sean uh, Sean Ramirez got a four-year ban, which is par for the course, but is also saying that he took a tainted supplement, uh, which included the uh, the Endurable and Austrian in it, which, I mean, I don't know. I, the thing, I, I, I talked, I put a video out this morning about this. The tainted supplement excuse is so fucking old and yeah. annoying, but if one person proves that it's true, which, by the way... It's definitely fucking true. Like oh, yeah. supplements are tainted to the gills because of how well, well, un, unregulated the it factories is. Like, are, yeah. You can you can find there are supplement companies that sell decent uh, supplements, supplements that are tested by third party uh, uh, third parties to make sure that they don't have anything in them that isn't on the list or, or that isn't on the ingredients list, and that the ingredients are you know okay for consumption. Those <coughs> things exist, but Generally speaking, if you walk into a fucking GNC and you just pick something up off the goddamn shelf, you're probably getting a lot of stuff that isn't on that label. And it's not on purpose most of the time. It's just that it's fucking cheap to make this shit and all tastes like watermelon sour raspberry juice. And then they just like use the same factories that are processing all this testing garbage that is, is not, you know, good for human consumption yet. Yeah. So that's the problem. The problem is... The tainted supplement excuse is just believable enough that you can't be like, man, fuck you. Don't use that shit. That that's bullshit. I can't believe you there because I don't know. But but give it. If you (laughs) give it. I mean, if you follow Sean Ramirez, it's not it's not that big of a shock. Like him coming out and saying that he took a tainted supplement is just. Him like acknowledging, like he's like breaking the fourth wall. It's like I know, man. I've known the whole time. Like <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I was just going to ignore this news release and continue following you. But now that's kind of how I feel with most of the masters. To be honest with you, <laughs> it's just, just like, like, yeah, man, we know it's fine. You like you, you are what fifty five? No, it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. It's like why are you so fucking jacked? Oh, okay, I get it. Probably for Sean, I, I, I'm not going to speculate there. I just say Sean Ramirez, just enjoy a high TRT dose life. Just yep. do that, man. Just live that. That's how, r- ride out your days in the sunset doing that. You don't need to go to silly CrossFit competitions. What you can do is just be jacked and tan in right your out, 60s. Right out on that massive boner you're going <laughs> to just, uh, just ride out that boner. 
Uh, enjoy it. Enjoy your shit. enjoy your day. Did you see? Did you see where Nick Palladino? Yeah, the most him on the roast comments. of all time. Nick Palladino commented saying, "So this means I won that that the open, open announcement, announcement hey. right?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's absolutely right. Retroactively, they're just uh, yeah, Nick Palladino wins. By the way, during that open announcement was also when uh, Sean Ramirez said, "Like." Uh, you know, I train more than I could possibly ever recover from, and that's why I take deer antler spray. And did like, he? Did he say deer antler? Yeah, spray? Yeah, he takes like spray? he takes like uh, God, what ten? Is it ten performance that there's, does? The there's ten, deer? but then there's also bucked up. I think he does ten. But I think ten's he the one 10. I think that does the spray. Yeah, I think he was doing ten. So you know, the this this is really interesting to me. We uh, we've kind of talked, I think, about this before. Deer antler spray. It's like this <laughs> idea that like. We have this we have this like group of chemicals called fucking steroids. Right? Hell yeah. They make That's a better name. They make fucking athletes. Steroids. They make <laughs> athletes better. Mm-hmm. They make real life for most people who who need them way fucking better. Just look at Joe Rogan. Just look yeah, look at Joe Rogan. He's been TRTing for the last ten years. Look he at the size more and more awesome as he gets <laughs> older. More and next more time, of a thumb. Next time you <laughs> yeah. see him at the UFC and he's holding that fucking <laughs> microphone and he has hair from like where my forearm would be, but it's on like the top of his knuckles, like he brushes it down. Next time you see him in his giant fucking gorilla hands, just remember that that man is on testosterone, and you could be too. Has he admitted that somewhere? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no. He, he talks he, about it. Right. Oh, he's on doctor prescribed yeah. TRT right, cool. for the last ten years. I, so, like, yeah. a normal... I didn't want to be on the record as accusing. <laughs> no, no, no. Joe he, he, taking he, steroids. Takes, he takes he takes uh, TRT to put him back up to like super high normal. Yeah, oh, exactly. You know? I mean, that, that's the thing about Good TRT is like technically you can't go super physiological, but I mean, what goes in there is that you know you walk into a TRT clinic whatever you're t- unless you're one of those guys that you knew in high school who was just always jacked and shredded and had a big knobby head you know those Restless. guys have those guys exactly those guys have naturally you know on the upper end of natural uh, testosterone you don't have that no. i don't have that i'm not even close soy so, boys over here exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> These thick Ch- soy chase boys. might be close his head <laughs> is big not quite knobby yet yeah. uh but yeah the idea is that t- those trt clinics if they're the good ones they get you right at the edge of uh of highest normal yeah so my my point is we have this like we have this group of compounds we have these steroids that people can take and they're not allowed for whatever reason, they're not allowed. But everything else in that space is marketed as close to being a steroid as fucking possible. It's it's hilarious that like not just things like, you know, BCAAs and fucking whatever pre-workout drinks you get at like the gas station are like this shit's like caffeine on steroids. It's coffee on steroids, right? But at the same time, you can't help but laugh when you look at someone get popped for using this stuff. And yet is doing like, I, I take IGF-1 out of deer antlers so that it can help my growth hormone. It's like, just fucking take HGH. Let's just get rid of that. Like, just do it. Just get in there. We're cool. You're 110 years old. You can do 55 muscles <laughs> in a row. <laughs> It's fine. It's fucking fine. Like, you know, we're not talking about people punching each other until one of them dies. We're talking about people who just like run really fast and sometimes climb ropes. Like, that's cool. No, and the the odd odd thing is that you know the all these supplements are marketed broadly towards folks in the barbell sports arena there, and in the barbell sports arena, you know, fitness, bodybuilding powerlifting, all that stuff. Most of those sports, you know, bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, are pretty much openly steroid sports. There, it's understood everyone's taking steroids. Just a couple of them that are, you know, the Olympic weightlifting, at least in the U.S., is tested. CrossFit is tested. That's about it. So, you know, yeah. everyone else who's buying BCAAs, uh, other than CrossFitters, should probably be taking steroids I'm what just, I'm saying you're listen, allowed I, I'm saying like I'm saying this I culturally we've been we've been told that this is wrong that's fine rules have been set in place that this is against the rules that's also fine hey, we're going to be defining the rules of this fake game yeah. anyway that's yeah. okay plus another set of rules comes from the US government plus another rules set of rules comes from the US government that tells us that you're fucked if you get caught with this shit also sure. also okay all of those are really good reasons not to do steroids. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But what I'm saying is, 
wouldn't it be awesome if they just let these motherfuckers oh, yeah. go buck wild? Like, just let everyone go full Andre Ganin and, like, rub exogenous <laughs> testosterone all over your, like, tomato red 55-year-old looking body on, like, a 22-year-old or whatever, right? Like, just let yourself go crazy, even if it means, you know, barely qualifying for the CrossFit Games and then getting caught. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Let's just see some crazy shit. Because when there's so many people who are on so many fucking drugs in the in the CrossFit, and I think most of them aren't on the high end competitor space. Yeah, I think in the gym scene, depending on where you're at in the states, especially, and depending on what country you're in, it could just be part of the game. Like the two of the new, uh, the all three of the new uh, uh, regionals tests that came out. One was Meridian. Two were from Latin America. Nice. The two mm. from Latin America were from Brazil. Brazil has a culture of using steroids. It's just part of the fucking thing. If you're going to the gym, you're using this shit because it's it's like, oh, I recover better and I look better. How much more? What more could I ask for? Like, <laughs> oh, exactly. It's, it's, it's like, great. It's, like, it's, like, it's uh, great. Uh, honestly, <laughs> are, I think we're the dumb ones there. It's like it's pretty stupid to lift weights that steroids is what I'm saying. So it's there's, all this, obvious, there's huh? all this like cultural weight around how and why this these things are being uh, these things are being enforced and um it's really tough to like both see and also be like well ah you're fine fuck it like we'll turn a blind eye to this one that's okay cuz i mean there has to be some consistency i'm just lost i feel like i'm confused you have been ranting for quite I a while i feel like i'm really confused conclusion. about this thing i don't have a conclusion i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to talk it out it's so weird to me that there's like it just none of it makes any fucking sense to me. I don't know how to feel about this. Part of me wants everything to just be fine. Just go fucking crazy. Use all the steroids you want. No. And then the other part of me is like, yeah, man, it's kind of bad for you. And you, you probably shouldn't be doing this. And it's unfair to people who aren't doing it. Yeah. I don't. That's I, what I'm in favor for. Because it presents an even bigger wall. Because now not only do I have to like kill myself in the gym, but I also have to put this substance in my body just to be able to like try to compete. But imagine how much more you'd power clean. How, how much more do I need the power to clean? <laughs> uh, you, you, you don't know yet, but you, you'd find out. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't want to have to do that. And I don't want like people coming up in the sport to feel like they have to do that. That's a good point. That's a good point. You have to think about the, the use. That's a, that's See, like the, the part of me that's that's way into that side of things also is the same part of me. Look at it like this. Mm. We have strong men and we have weightlifting. Right? Strongman's fucking cool. Eddie Hall deadlifted 1,100 pounds. Weightlifting is also fucking cool. Ne- neither of those are clean sports, but arguably weightlifting is more clean. For sure. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Ye-er. That's pretty... That's, I think that's... It's more clean because it's in the Olympics and it is tested. It's sure. cleaner. Mm-hmm. It is at least tested. There's at least like the theater of it being tested, right? And, uh, and I've seen in weightlifting what it's like to be a member of Team USA to go overseas and compete and get motherfucked by these guys who are just constantly on cycle until it's time to get off cycle for competitions. I totally get that, and I respect that. I I think CrossFit is trying to set that tone. They're trying to say, hey, guys, you shouldn't, like what you said, Chase, you shouldn't feel like you have to take this shit. But, uh, you know, and those of you who are taking this shit are fucked. I don't know. And uh, part of it... Two people at a time. Oh, yeah. From a division that no one cares about. That's no. also true. And in all seriousness, folks, in all seriousness, folks, yes, the reason CrossFit can't do that and shouldn't, you know, have an all dr- the all-drug CrossFits is... Uh, that's the new name of the competition, the CrossFits. Uh, the all-drug CrossFits is that CrossFit's focus is on health it has one foot in the health door whereas these other sports bodybuilding not really no one thinks bodybuilding's healthy no one thinks powerlifting's healthy strong men no those are just freak shows Mm. whereas crossfit has part of its brand and part of the identity of the sport is health so ultimately we never really are going to see an all drug crossfit competition other than grid (laughs) do you (laughs) Do you think CrossFit lets me have the affiliate name All Drug CrossFit? <laughs> <laughs> CrossFit All Drug. I think... Uh, and then we host a know. sanctioned event. That would be a tough one to slip by the affiliate affiliate team there. ADCF. There you go. CFAD. 
That's even better. CrossFit all drug. Um, CFAD. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, Cliff. I think CrossFit cannot and definitely should not ever open up the floodgates uh, and allow uh, CrossFit as a sport to become an untested space because it would absolutely undermine not just everything that they've been working towards, but it would also, uh, you know, really make them look like a bunch of assholes. So I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, and I don't think it should happen. Good, good observation there, Cliff. Dang. I dig it. You single-handedly convinced Armin otherwise because he's all Cause he was, he was leaning drug. in that direction. No, he I was hard lean. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was almost there. I'm just Ooh, saying, I still, love, the I still love strong man. I, I just, great. Just saying, I'm going to keep enjoying a little bit of Strongman. Wait, well, no, I enjoy all the drug sports. They're way more entertaining to me. Jesus. Yeah, Baseball, I, I enjoy, Strongman, WWE. NFL. Uh-huh, yeah. NFL. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I, I enjoy the hell out of all those sports. I'm yeah. a big bodybuilding fan. I mean, the reason I started lifting weights, I think the thing that finally got me to lift weights continuously was, and never really stopped since, was seeing Ronnie Coleman on... The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, with the uh, Gina Davis was the other guest there, but she was sitting on the side of the couch. Ronnie Coleman comes out in a, uh, you know, he was very big, but cut completely covered. I was like, that, that's a big, puffy-looking guy there. <laughs> and then uh, at a certain point, uh, and this is like right at his peak, uh, right at post-contest, uh, you know, Jay asks him, you know, take off his uh, shirt and pants there, and there's all, you know, pull away. And then I see Ronnie Coleman at his peak, and that's my first exposure to a modern bodybuilder outside of Arnold. And I was like, I want that. Something However, something awoke that. inside of Cliff <laughs> at that day. Yes, yes. Ronnie Coleman and, imprinted uh, on the cliff. Something oh, yeah. sexual awoke within him that day. Mm-hmm. Oh. I've never, I've, I, it was around, I think when I was 14 is when that happened. And <laughs> oh I, my God. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. But I've never, since I was 14, since about then, I've never not, I don't think a, a more than a few weeks have gone by in my life without lifting weights. And part of uh, that is just the idea of Ronnie Coleman there. Yeah. That's good, dude. Dear God. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I remember uh, Ronnie There's Coleman. There's a lot of things that peaked on that exact <laughs> by the, by, by the uh. way, By the way, I'll also, so remember Ronnie Coleman being interviewed by someone else about that Tonight Show appearance? And, you know, what was it like going on the Tonight Show? And, you know, me and Gina Davis. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it was cool and all that. Uh, I, think, uh, I think she was intimidated by my hugeness. <laughs> because that, that, <laughs> that, that is what I've always been, wanted to... That's what I always felt I wanted to say... My soul wants to say to every person uh, I encounter this, I, I hope they are intimidated by my hugeness. <laughs> I just want that, that's, that's, that's written on my soul. I just want that to be the impression everyone gets of me. So I, far, not my, my girth maybe, but not hugeness. <laughs> <laughs> I get it Phrasing. because, uh, you know, I had the exact same moment except with Miko. Oh, ah, okay. And when he said, Bashta. <laughs> and since that moment, that that has been echoing in my in my heart. I haven't um, had this moment with any. Oh, just wait for it, Chase. It'll happen one day. It'll happen. It'll be a glorious moment. Um, <laughs> Speaking of Ronnie Coleman, everybody on Netflix, The King, the Ronnie Coleman documentary. Oh shit! Check it out. It's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, we didn't finish it, but we started it. Yeah, I um, just didn't finish it. Just the last yeah, thirty minutes. We only have the last half hour. Yeah. Um, speaking of untested competitions. Chase and I won a CrossFit competition this past weekend. You're damn right we did. Mm. <sighs> Second week oh, in a row. Great <laughs> Eiffel Tower right there. Uh, yeah, a single so Bogart. Chase and I, Chase and I uh, competed at an in-house little little throwdown at uh, CrossFit Yakaru yeah. in, here in Austin, Texas, which is where we both train, and um, it went swimmingly well. And I can now. It's Thursday. It's been uh, it's been five days. I can now straighten my arms without pain. You, you haven't been to the gym since, have you? Uh, no, I went in on Tuesday. I want to say, oh, okay, Monday or Tuesday. Nice. So, who was your competition there? You just mop it, mop it up with uh, some regular. I don't know, or Chase. What? Who was our competition? Um. Well, we had my we had my training partner Brian. That's right. Uh, he had a team uh, from somebody that was also from your class, um, and then there was two or three other teams. There was a team of outsiders. Oh, we fucked those guys up. Yeah, but they they came they they tied with us on the last event, but they didn't come close on any other <laughs> events. <laughs> no, they're the, they're the only reasons that me and uh, Armin both had to uh, PR a thruster that day, our three rep max thruster. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah, so it was uh, it was PR. I want to know. 
I, I mean, I don't think that mine was a PR, but it was a recent PR. That's for it was sure. a recent PR for me as yeah. too. Uh, I hit two thirty five, and Armin finished up at two fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Gave us like a four fifty total for that one. It was nice. three rep max thruster. Yeah. Okay, three rep max. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't just a single. Yeah. Um, yeah. that was, was the real- second event. The first yeah. event was really we that destroyed. really set the tone. We destroyed. So the first event was it was uh, for time twenty pull ups. 60 double unders each, mm-hmm. 20 alternating dumbbell snatches, 40 pull ups, 60 double unders each, 40 dumbbell snatches, 60 pull ups, 60 double unders each, 60 dumbbell snatches. That's a hefty amount of pull ups. Yeah. Right? And I went into that event anticipating that I would be doing all of the pull ups yeah. and the majority of the snatches. Because I told him that that's what he would be doing. But man, Armin like over delivered, over delivered to the point Thank to you. where when I was doing the exercise portion of it i was looking around like rich froning during an open (laughs) announcement and just going super fucking slow because there was no need for me to go yeah we finished like two maybe two and a half minutes ahead of the second person it was a good feeling workout yeah it was pretty good we we destroyed that workout that was great um and that was the workout which made my elbows a little tender, made my biceps a little tender because I don't do butterfly pull-ups very often, but I, I pulled those out of my back pocket just for that competition <laughs> Present chase. fitness. You're very welcome. <laughs> Sneaky fit strikes again. Uh, uh, but yeah. the highlight of the day. <laughs> <laughs> was it the highlight? We went into the uh, we went into the final event. We won both the, the previous. There was three events. Mm-hmm. We won the first two. We had a strong lead for first, but we went into the last <laughs> last event. Uh, it was twenty one fifteen. No, it was oh, twelve no. nine six. Twelve nine six of partner deadlifts. Okay. The Whoa. bar, the deadlift was four oh five. Okay. So it's both of us on a four and a five pound bar, which is nothing. Which is nothing. In case you're wondering. And then, uh, bar facing burpees synchronized. Okay. Nothing difficult there. I, what could it have been? <laughs> there was nothing difficult no. there. I'm I'm warming up. I pulled four oh five just by myself just to make sure it was you know fine. Um, and then Armin's like, yeah, can we go ahead and do like a couple at 135? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And he's like, let's do 225 too. And then we did 315 as well because he wanted to do 315. And then he was like, let me make sure 405 feels okay. I started getting concerned after <laughs> like after 225. I was like, yeah, man, it's a deadlift. It's a deadlift. It's a deadlift. We don't need to add more weight to this. But he was definitely concerned. <laughs> I was very concerned. And for good reason. When do you think the wheels fell off for you during that <laughs> during that workout uh after the second set of burpees so it was the burpees first so yeah. we started with 12 burpees over the bar and like a fool i was i was only a couple seconds behind chase as opposed to you know what in reality would have been chase spending six to eight seconds on the ground every rep if i was going at my preferred pace yeah he would have jumped over fallen down and i would have just started <laughs> jumping over the bar certainly the adrenaline helped carry you through at that pace. the first round it did mm-hmm. so we uh we did the 12 burpees and we did the 12 deadlifts and then uh well and then <laughs> the, the the other the nine burpees went okay but I could tell everything was starting to fall apart. Um, and then during the nine deadlifts, I <laughs> he didn't I communicate any of this. <laughs> I literally stopped deadlifting at one point and Chase just, just pulled leave Chase half hanging of there. four or five after like six reps. <laughs> I just decided I'm not doing any more of these deadlifts. There was I, no communication. None. I, I stopped. Pulled, I pulled my half up to as far as you can get one half of the barbell off the ground with the other half being on the ground. Um, and then I looked over and saw him just hands on hips st- <laughs> looking at the barbell while it's sitting on the ground. Yeah. There's no yelling at Armin in that moment because no. he's already defeated himself. I died. I died during the workout. You couldn't humiliate him anymore. You guys, I go, deadlifts and burpees, neither of those things are things that I'm particularly good at. And then you add it into a fast workout where I'm working with a dude who's literal jams are deadlift and burpees <laughs> it's it's a fucked combination I, there was no way that i was going to be okay during that workout in fact <laughs> during at one point at one point i told chase before the workout started i was like hey man i only have one speed on burpees like i have i have like 100 burpees for time speed i don't have 10 burpees for time speed that's it i just have like the this is i'm going to be working out for the next six to eight minutes speed and Chase was like, yeah, yeah, no big deal. We'll start the 12s at that pace, 
and then we'll do the nines faster and we'll do the sixes even faster than that. And I was like, you didn't hear what I said, did you? <laughs> so during the six, we do the six deadlifts uh, or we do the we do the, the, the last set of deadlifts in the set of nine and we're starting the six burpees and he goes, fast, fast, let's go fast. And I was like, fuck you, Chase. <laughs> there, there is no fast here. This is fast. And he has video of it, but uh, I'm, I'm 100% convinced that you could have left that workout as is, 1296, 405 pound deadlifts and burpees over the bar, and Chase would have done it faster without me. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we still got third overall in that workout, or second overall in that workout. We tied for fourth. Yeah. This oh, rem- did we really? Oh, we were fuck, far we enough ahead. Lost. We were for- okay. far enough ahead. Cool. This does remind me, if J- Chase's jam is deadlifts and burpees, talking about, uh, last week we were talking about repeating uh, CrossFit games for the fun of it, repeating the 2010 CrossFit games. What Chase ought to do, if he hasn't done it already, is repeat all of the events of the famous Every Second Counts CrossFit games. Deadlift burpees was one of the events there. Uh, five deadlifts, oh, five rounds of five deadlifts and ten burpees. Deadlift weight, 275 pounds which, oh, then, yeah. <laughs> which back then by the way was like hyper heavy it was like how dare you load a bar up this heavy for deadlifts and then the 10 burpees by the way there was no rule that you had to be upright All oh yeah i've seen i remember seeing the video like they're yeah not 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 burpees over bar nothing like that uh the only workout where i think you'd be kind of fucked couldn't crush it might be the thrusters at 155 or yeah, the uh, you know squat clean and jerks at 155. I think Kalipa would still take you there, even 2008 Kalipa. But the other events, I'd be curious. Be curious if you are fit enough to be the 2008 CrossFit Games champion. That damn That's hill, big. dude. I would have oh, said yeah, I would have 100 percent been like, yeah, definitely. But then I saw that hill in person, and I have mm. my doubts. That's a good point. I now understand John Wilborn's pain during that movie. <laughs> yeah. The, the best part about that is when he crosses the finish line and he takes zero more steps. He crosses the finish line and is just like sitting. I'm done. This is it. Game over. 800 meters. Not my jam. Dumb. This is stupid. <laughs> Why would you ever run more than 10 yards? <laughs> yeah. Um, so one thing that, uh, that people who are watching this have realized by now and... Uh, and that the people on my Instagram and our Instagram have realized by now is that we are wearing some sexy new hardware, guys. Sure are. You guys are wearing the long sleeve San Tired is Enough uh, shirts, which are modeled after the old school Dare logo. Dare I say, <laughs> we knocked it out of the park. I think uh, we crushed it. And then I'm wearing the Miami Vice sand yes. tired is enough shirt mm-hmm. this one's approved for eating if you watch the podcast you would know this <laughs> it's but eating approved it's black which i i dig because i dump shit all all over myself all the time i'm surprised i haven't spilled this water yet good job dude but what i like most about it is that it really shows off this cliff arm that's right next to me oh dude. fuck yeah this is super super tight and clingy shows off the muscles shows off the delts if you got good overhead light yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i uh i've got to say i'm really pumped about this one these guys uh these guys came out a lot nicer than i expected them to yes they are currently unavailable for purchase <laughs> <laughs> so i mean I, I don't know what to tell you guys but they are going to be coming soon They'll be available for purchase soon. There's a couple other uh, pieces that that I'm working on that I'm I'm trying to get the uh, the samples in for next week. Um, so maybe you guys will see those then. But uh, <coughs> hopefully these are going to be available by the end of the month, which would be legit AF. You can just in time for Christmas for yourself as a Christmas gift. That's right. Because oh, we yeah. <laughs> it'll be three thousand dollars per shirt. It'd be mad irresponsible for you to buy this shirt for anybody <laughs> else in your life. <laughs> Oh, cool, a rag. (laughs) Guys, if you support the podcast, you should definitely buy the shirts because, you know, the money is going to a good cause. Every dollar that I get from the sale of the shirts will go directly to... Hmm, Ronnie Coleman shit. porn. I'm missing Ronnie <laughs> Coleman. I I am missing. You see those Coleman old porn. those old VHS tapes of Ronnie Coleman working out. Uh, my collection is not complete. I need to track that shit. I need something less wholesome. I need something even nastier. I see. I started that joke thinking I could come up with something by the end. And no, you did. I just ran out of nothing. It's like I will office. spend every penny 
that I make from these shirts on SARMs. And I'll test them out for you guys and give you my review. That is a great idea. Like, you should buy these shirts because it's directly contributing to your entertainment in the future. You're getting a dope-ass shirt that you can wear. And then you're also purchasing the fact that you're going to see some crazy shit happen to Cliff. Mm -hmm. He might grow an extra dick out of his chest. Who doesn't want to see that? You guys, you're doing a really good job of selling something they can't buy. (laughs) Right now, fuck. I'm going to have to work a lot harder to try and get that. Six that easy that payments of six ninety nine. Shop open. Uh, so, yeah, there's six easy payments. <laughs> That's right. There's a payment plan. There's layaway on these shirts if, in case you're interested. How much is one shirt? Sixty nine, sixty nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm really pumped about the shirts. I, uh, I'm i looking forward to to repping the San, uh, the San podcast. Attired is enough lifestyle mindset theory right. philosophy it's gonna look great mm-hmm. whenever Everywhere. i I'm pr wear- another lift i shouldn't have been able to pr hell yeah hell yeah you know where i'm gonna wear the shirt Church. <laughs> work work hell yeah mm-hmm. oh, remind man. them <laughs> we should have put our faces on it <laughs> that's right we should have put our faces on it um yeah so there's a whole lot of other shirts coming down the pipeline by the way this is just the this is just the start we have a lot of different um i think i think design ideas at least i know i do I, we've talked a lot about a few different ideas that that we can we can pop out but this is just the beginning these will i don't know if these will always be available but they're definitely going to be coming up soon I and like this uh, is like the flagship shirt yeah and if you and if you buy the dare or the miami vice shirts you're, you're supporting you the know homies you're supporting looking fly as fuck while working out i guess <laughs> you're supporting not trying too hard, which is what this podcast is all about. Yeah, that, don't that, that, try that, at you all. wear that as a yeah, exactly. You wear wear that as a statement on your chest that yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all these other people taking it way too seriously. We're just chill, man. I'm just chill. That's what's going on. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of just being chill, uh, we alluded to this earlier, but Chase PR'd his power clean this week. Ooh, and he P- he PR'd his power clean. Uh. In like the ugliest way possible, but with a redonkulous lift of 320 pounds. Ooh, that is nice. He sent me the video <laughs> and he was like, dude, and I <laughs> looked at it and I was like doing the math. I was like, that can't be right. And I looked at it again and I was like, no, I'm adding something wrong. There's no way this is right. And then I did it again and I was like, is it 320? Is it actually? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I think Chase. I just think that's cruel, though, to send Armin a video and then make him do the math by counting the plates on the fucking bar. You know, that, that, that's a lot. Of, that's a whole lot of having to repeat the same video and count and do math. I, I sent it to him, and all I said was, "You want to see something really fucking disgusting?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got my body. Uh, draws the line on good technique at 275 for a power clean. Fair enough. And Me too. Same here. Then in an effort to make sure I get the power clean and not hit a full squat clean like most people would if they fail a power clean, my legs rotate and extend outwards into a starfish position to the point to where they I, I anatomically can't squat. <laughs> like oh, yeah. my Literally my knees and my ankles will break if I have to go to past squat. parallel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a magical thing. That is, yeah, that is something that that's a lot of folks do. I think my power clean, most of my power clean PRs were definitely done in that starfish stance, and so many other people do too. It's, of course. It's just a natural thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's, and there's people out there that the, they, they can't starfish. Like, they can't make their body do something that, <laughs> that <tough>. dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Did you... Um, what was your old what was your old power clean PR? Because I feel like I watched you fail cleaning like three hundred pounds during the open this past year. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely did. Uh my old power clean PR was two ninety five. Wow. And that was just recently, like whenever we tested for the cycle. Before that it was two eighty five. Like that was the most ever. Look at this guy. Look at this guy getting better at fitness and shit. I can now power clean more than I can squat clean. Regionals athlete. <laughs> 2019 here i come 2019 look out for me Regional Utah. 2019 that's right uh yeah i guess i guess what i was really impressed with is your full commitment to possibly breaking your body forever <laughs> well yeah here's it was a 10 minute imam and on 315 the rep before it uh my my like 
right right leg just super shot out to the side and like i thought i like broke my leg <laughs> for a second and uh we still had another minute to go so i was like well fuck it i guess i'll go 320 and see if i can just full sin and like snap my leg off because that means i don't have to come in tomorrow or the next day oh yeah mm-hmm. i understand that motivation yeah yeah, and then uh, there's a lot of other u- ugly things like elbow. So if you saw Josh Bridges <laughs> do the clean ladder at what, what was that? The 2015 I think it games? The, uh, it was, I think it was like 2015, 2016, one of those two. Yeah. It was like one of the last ones. Like where he almost shatters his wrist and, and like elbows underneath the bar. Into his bicep with his elbows like turned out sideways and shit. That's exactly how I caught it. Yeah. Mm. It was beautiful. It was it's, magnificent. It's real taxing on your system. <laughs> it was magnificent. I'm sore in places you shouldn't be sore. Dude, your whoop your whoop score has been like <laughs> fucking garbage since yeah, then. Yeah, the the day before that I did a uh a, like a 640 2k row. <laughs> Good god. Just out of nowhere. We haven't been training our row at all. So I just pulled that because I was racing this big some bitch that we trained with. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so my my body is real pissed at me this week. It's incredible. It's been awesome. It's a deload week. (laughs) (laughs) What do you do with all that fitness? Just in pain. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Perpetual pain. (laughs) Perfect. Uh, I I also saw recently um, an update on... You mentioned, Cliff, the 2007 CrossFit Games, 2008 CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, Rogue... We talked about the fact that they're doing this Legends event as well. Yeah, That's something that they have been exceptionally bad at discussing. Like, they haven't done a good job of saying, hey, we're doing this Legends event. And I got a bunch of people messaging me saying, like, why the hell are they inviting Stacey Tovar and Julie Fouché to compete at the <laughs> Rogue Invitational? <laughs> they get murdered. Like, what are they going to do? Like, they're wasting their spots on these athletes. And I was like, ooh, yeah, no, that's, like, a different thing. I'm pretty sure they're inviting these guys out to, like, do, like, three workouts and over the course of three days and just, like, <laughs> high-five people and sign posters and shit. Um, but they added a couple people to the list, including Spiel. We were talking hey. about how it would be awesome if they invited Spieler last time, and they have they have invited Spiel. And all I can think of is, um, you remember when he retired and then unretired? There was mm-hmm. that commercial of him. He was like, "What am I going to do with all this fitness?" Yeah, and he's like doing shit like lunging, mm-hmm. you know, his groceries back in, and like all this crazy wacky shit. And I've never finally, seen that. He finally signs up for the open as the 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 payoff. The, the payoff point, is the payoff. Yeah. He mm-hmm. signs up for the open. But my point is, I don't think there's an event outside of the rogue invitational that i've been as pumped for um at least not one that's been that's been like officially confirmed because this rogue invitational is like the expression of everything that makes rogue rogue they're they're building a venue in their space like they're not just going to use the space they already have they like they have this giant open space this lot that they bought and they're building a fucking venue there god well if you have all those blow torches and pieces of iron that you see in all the road (laughs) commercials then yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta put those folks to work yeah uh they literally literally, (laughs) they're gonna be dumped Oh yeah, the stands are made of spare pieces from Rogue Rig. You got a right. handstand walk through this molten lava. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be 17 billion pounds of iron. It's going to be going into that, and it's all going to be matte black. That's that's sexy. Yeah. I'm paying for that the, event. The benches are going to be knurled. You're just going to sit <laughs> on knurling. You like, can't fall out of your chair. You're not going to be able to fall out of your chair. It's going to be incredible. Events so unreal, you're going to fall out of your chair, but you can't because we got knurled seats. That's right. Uh, yeah, the, the rogue event is, uh, is something that I'm very much looking forward to. I have no idea about any of the details. I emailed them. I tried to get as much information from them as possible and I got nothing. So what I'm trying to learn here, and if anybody listening knows a a good contact, like a, an actual person, not like a vague, like marketing at roguefitness.com or whatever the fuck, like a person, get me a person to talk to because I, I need to know more about this thing. Like who's programming it? When are they going to run their qualifiers? How big is this fucking venue going to be? Can I come? All these questions <laughs> are really important. Can I get everyone, free tickets for my homies? Everyone wants to know. Yeah. Can can the Tired is Enough crew get there? That's, can oh we yeah, commentate I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, exactly. Can we commentate the Legends event? I think I can objectively say that the Tired is Enough crew uh, represents the best possible team of commenters commentators 
at that event yeah. that could possibly exist. And just commenting. I mean, we don't need to commentate. We can just comment. If oh, yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Well, it's a cut, yeah, c- color. Yeah, sure. We could we could we could comment on our own, but I'm saying yeah, whatever. We know this shit and will bring a sense of humor and snark to the to the yeah. proceedings that is sadly lacking in all other crosses. We're dick joke poets. Mm-hmm. And that's what this world needs more of. Dick joke poets. And these athletes are all old enough to appreciate that. I hope They're so. They're not these young uh, young snowflakes who are competing <laughs> in the CrossFit these days. These guys are old school. That's right. Mm-hmm. They've they've seen a dick joke or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you think uh, they timed it out with the delivery of the invites for the actual, the Rogue Classic, so that Ben Smith got his before Matt Fraser, and Ben could be like, oh, sick, I'm going to go do this thing. And then Matt posted like two days later like i'm gonna go <laughs> fuck up ben smith uh i yeah i think that's 100 what happened i'm gonna say yes because that that makes me happy yeah. to think that that's what happened <laughs> that someone at rogue hq is like playing this weird game <laughs> <laughs> like let's just let's just invite matt last to everything so everyone's hopes are up a little bit <laughs> it's like let's see who changes their minds like 15 people declined their invitation after Matt Fraser said he would go to the they Rogue did, event. They did a good strategy there. You want to hold off on that Matt Fraser invite as long as possible. For sure. Yeah, man. That dude's not going to lose. Fuck. It's so crazy. <laughs> they can they can, uh, they can, can Yahtzee the, the entire CrossFit game season as much as they want. Just put that thing in a fucking cup, shake it up as much as they want, roll out whatever version they want, and at the end of the day, Matt Fraser is still going to be standing on that podium. <laughs> He wasn't even on one of the die that got spilled out. <laughs> so. Yeah, he'll find his way out there. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, you guys will also notice, other than our sweet t-shirts, that Kyle isn't here. And we mentioned earlier before that Kyle's not here. Um, but uh, without Kyle here, we cannot in good conscience talk about Unforgiven. He has thoughts. He has so many thoughts. We all have thoughts, but he has more thoughts. It seems like he'd be really upset if we did it without him. He would be. He would be justifiably upset. That's a fun movie conversation that he uh, he wouldn't want to miss out on. He's fine missing out on boring CrossFit talk. Of course, aren't we all? Um, So, so with that in mind, you guys have one more week to watch Unforgiven, which means if you've watched it twice, watch it a third time. If you've watched it zero times, watch it a third time. This is like your the the semester test that your your professor warned you about the entire semester. You have no excuse but to come in and get at least a C. That's right. That's right. I think it's very important that uh that you guys watch Unforgiven because I think we're going to talk about it for a really long time. We might even make it, it might like be a the movie only podcast. Yeah. Cuz who knows what's going to happen between now and then. Maybe more people will test positive. Ooh, that'd be exciting. I could be confused again. <laughs> <laughs> I tested positive. Uh, what, what the hell just happened? <laughs> I uh, didn't compete or pee in a cup. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and call it here. I think I think this, this is good. This is good. You can find Kyle at Mr. Kyle Bogart, uh, allegedly the most sensual Instagram account on the internet. It's not here to defend the title. All right, you can find Cliff Dickslap Bogart <laughs> um, at uh, at Cliff Bogart on Instagram. I'm at Chase504. You can see that really ugly 320 clean as well as some other fitness videos. That's right. And I am at Arm and Hammer TV. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching and listening. Um, and remember, tired is enough. See you guys next time.